Welcome. Welcome to worship of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, worship will be a little different. It'll be totally online because of the snow that's coming down right now. Let us pray. Father God, we give you thanks. We thank you for this day and we thank you for the snow. Thank you, God, that you are with us always. Help us, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth online and for those that are gathered here in Jesus precious name amen this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it from Isaiah, the 62nd verse, 62nd chapter, verses 1 through 5, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our responsive reading is Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your, your righteousness, righteousness is like, like mighty mountains. Your, your judgments are like the great deep. O Lord, humans and animals you save. O God, how precious is your steadfast love. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They, they feast on the abundance of your house, and, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you 
and your salvation to the upright of heart. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, Amaya or other, you were influenced and read, led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. Another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour had not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. We know the story. We've read this story. We possibly even joked about this story when Jesus turned water into wine, his first miracle. The only place in the Gospels where this is recorded is in the book of John. And it begins in Galilee, Cana of Galilee. And if you know the book of John, you know that it is a journey. It is not a linear type of story. It circles back and around itself and spirals and dips in places. The beginning of John is when the disciples are called in Galilee, and then the journey continues to Jerusalem, and then back through Samaria, back to Galilee, and then once again back to Jerusalem. John's gospel is a progression of the miracles of Jesus. By John beginning with the miracle in Galilee at a wedding, a celebration, he is pointing to Jesus' human yet fully divine ultimate destination. We heard in Isaiah that God called Zion his bride, Jerusalem. The bride, Zion, Jerusalem, is the naming of the same place. The miracle in Cana of Galilee in the book of John offers us an important message about who Jesus is and about the power of Jesus' name. Here, the mother of Jesus, who, if you noticed, is not named, even though we know her name is Mary, in this particular passage, it is not the fact that she has the name Mary that's important. It's the fact that she is the mother of Jesus. We know Jesus always seeks his Father's will and is obedient to his Father God. So when Jesus says to his mother, when she informs him that they have no wine, and he says, woman, what concern is that to you and me? My hour has not yet come. We get a glimpse of who Jesus is and how he is in constant communication with God the Father. As we are looking at this passage in a deeper way, we can see that Jesus knows his time is not yet. He knows it is not the time for his glory to be revealed. When we think of the glory of Jesus and how that was revealed, it points directly to Jerusalem and the cross and the crucifixion, and the death, and the glorious resurrection of Jesus. So as Jesus begins his public ministry at a wedding, 
It doesn't tell us who's getting married. That's not important for the story of the journey that Jesus is about to begin. It's not important to know exactly why there wasn't enough wine. What is, it, what is important to note, that Jesus used an everyday item, water. So whenever you see water and wine, what comes to your mind? Does water and wine come to your mind about water for baptism? Wine for the blood of Jesus? You see, embedded in this story, it tells us what is to come for us who believe in Jesus Christ. So Jesus used this everyday item of water and the clay pots and jars that were quite large that were used for purification when anybody entered into a feast or into a home they would wash their hands and their face and sometimes their feet out of respect and that's why these jars were lined up for scripture tells us that there were six stone water jars each holding about 20 to 30 gallons it is not the detail of how big the jars were or how much they were or what they were made of or how much they would hold that should catch our attention it is the fact that the servants obeyed jesus when he told them to fill the jars with water and then they drew some out and took it to the chief steward then the miracle was made known to those who listened to jesus so even for a large wedding the jars were significant in the fact that it points to the old way, the purification rites. And yet the miracle of water changed to wine, new wine in those jars points to a new way. They point to what Jesus Christ will do for all who call on his name. You see, God had this plan and this plan was from the beginning and in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, God, Father, and Holy Spirit. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus was in the beginning with God. And so as Jesus is changing water into wine, as this miracle develops, one of the things the mother of Jesus says to the servants is do whatever he tells you. That should speak to us today as we obey what Jesus says in our lives and as we obey the word of Jesus, who is the word of God. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in our hearts and in our lives and in our world. Miracles that are unnoticed and unappreciated by even us, the church and especially by the world in which we live. No different than the greatest miracle that ever happened, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the miracle that went unnoticed and underappreciated in the time that it happened. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are gifted with. It is the same power by the Holy Spirit when miracles can happen in each and every day within us. A change of attitude, a change of hatred to forgiveness is a miracle if you think about it. We are stubborn people, no different than those who were wandering around in the wilderness. We are stubborn people and we have our own idols and we have our own comfort zones. But this miracle, of Jesus turning water into wine teaches us that miracles do exist and points toward the miracle of his resurrection. We too can point to that miracle in our lives. We too can trust in that miracle in our own lives. Jesus took something ordinary and mundane and made something beautiful out of it. How many of you feel so ordinary and mundane sometimes and need to know that Jesus is making something beautiful out of you 
not only something beautiful out of you, but something beautiful with a mission. When God creates in you a new thing, it is used for the glory of God. If you but let it, if you but notice and recognize and appreciate the gifts, Paul talks about spiritual gifts and how everyone receives spiritual gifts. The faith in Jesus is a gift. It comes from God. It is not something we can create ourselves. It comes from God. When we say yes to Jesus, there's power in saying yes to Jesus. And that power is the gift of faith. To believe all that God would have us to know about God and about our salvation. The assurance of our salvation and about our mission as we join God in God's mission for all God created. There is power in the name of Jesus. How often do we, the church, corporately tap in to the power intentionally and appreciate it? How often do we as individuals tap into the power and use it for the glory of God? It's a challenge, church, for us gathered here and for the church worldwide to recognize and appreciate the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus' name to change, to transform, to recreate, to be part of the creation story as it continues forth into the future, into eternal life. There is power in the name of Jesus. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? And how will you do more with it? This week and in the weeks ahead, as we anticipate the season of Lent, a time that we repent of our sins and anticipate Easter, this time of Lent is a time to prepare our hearts for Jesus Christ to enter in fresh and new. There is power in the name of Jesus. Follow Jesus to the feast. The table is already prepared for all who call on the name of Jesus as Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for the beautiful snow. We thank you, God, that our congregation is safe today. Help us, Lord, to always seek you first and appreciate the gift of the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to always remain true to your word, to remain contact, in contact with you and with the world around us. Help us, Lord, to be what you would have us to be. And help us, Lord, to remember to call on the name of Jesus, for there is power in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Receive this blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord by loving and serving your neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen.